Want to soar? Get a mentor? Hey, it's Nina Carmichael, and we made these videos. It's probably because you're the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you need a push by surround yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband, Evan Carmichael. When you learn how to do this, everything changes. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Praise the effort, not the result. Everything in your life changes when you learn to tie your self-worth to your effort instead of the results. Most people tie their self-worth to the results, to winning. You only feel good about yourself when you win. If that's how you think, then you're screwed. Because that person only takes on projects that you know you have a pretty high chance of winning at. And therefore, you play small for life. The key is to tie your self-worth to the effort, to trying. And if you do that well, you'll win beyond your wildest imaginations. So let's use me as an example. Look at this video right here, this video. Two minutes before getting on and making this video, I'm nervous. I'm scared. I don't want to do it. I'm trying to find a reason why I don't have to do this video. Now why? I've done 6,000 of these videos. Do I not love it anymore? No, nope, that's not it. I love doing it. So why am I afraid? Who cares? I've done 6,000. The answer is because I don't want to make it the same way that I've done the past 6,000. I want to push harder. I want to push and do something new. If I was just doing what I've already done, then it'd be easy. Right? If you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, it becomes easy. But then you get bored. You start to hate your life. You start realizing that everything is just a photocopy over and over and over and over and over again. And so, how do I push through? I put this pressure on myself to say, this video right now has to be the best video that I've ever made. That's my intention going in to every time I'm filming. Most days I don't accomplish it. <laughs> when you're trying something new and scary and bigger and bolder, most of the time you won't get it. You fail a lot. But I tie my self-worth, my respect to the effort I'm trying. And every now and then, you'll make a bit of a breakthrough. You get a bit of a win. And then those accumulate. And then you get another one, and another win, and another win. And so the answer isn't have a big goal and then find a reason why you can't do it. The answer isn't dream big and then convince yourself of some logical excuse for why you're not gonna take action. The answer is to push through. The answer is you're scared and you're gonna do it anyway. The answer for me is I'm going to make another video. I'm going to try and push myself harder. And I think that's what achievers do. Because achievers are failing more than you. Because most days I get up and fail. Most days I'm, I'm just failing. It's another failure, another failure, another failure. But the more you fail, the more you're eventually going to win. I'm going to get massive results. Because you tie yourself worth to your ability to get up and try again and try again and try again and pat yourself on the back for the effort you're putting in not just when you're winning. So how do you do it? I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think will help. Step number one is what I call the pillow test. This is my actual pillow that when I'm in Toronto, I sleep on every single night. And the pillow test is make yourself proud before you hit your head on the pillow, right? Before you go to sleep tonight, before your head hits your pillow, you ask yourself, am I proud of my effort today? Not how much did I win? Not did I get the results I was looking for? Not did I get my million views or close that big sale? Are you proud of your effort? Are you proud of your effort? Can you put your head on your pillow tonight and say, man, I am proud of the effort that I put in. That's the test. That's the test for tonight. That's your test for tomorrow night and the night after that and the night after that and the night after that. And the more that you get a yes to say, yeah, heck yeah. Heck yeah, I'm proud of my effort. You do that, you watch your business explode. Step number two is expect to suck at the start. Anytime you're trying something new, expect to suck. Don't expect to just try something new and it's amazing. This is where a lot of people fall down. You've had some success, you're at a certain level, you're gonna try something new. Before you go up, you're probably gonna go down. That's part of the experimentation process. It doesn't mean you suck as a human, it just means that you don't have the skill sets, the talents yet. You're trying something new. I haven't brought props in on my videos before. That was a new test. I expect it to suck. Maybe on, a, on an off chance it works. Amazing, I learned from it. But when you're trying something, 
It's brand new, you don't have the confidence in it yet, you're still figuring out the path. Expect to suck. When you put so much of your worth into expecting to be great the first time out, here's what happens. You try one thing, you record one video, you watch it back, say, man, that sucked. And then you never make a video again. Meanwhile, if you just kept doing it, you would eventually be awesome. You would eventually crush it. Go back and watch my first videos. Go back. Go back to my main channel. Go back to the beginning. See where I started. I've kept them all up so you can see the journey, the progress of how much I sucked at the very beginning. It took me 350 videos until I wasn't embarrassed by my content. I was, I was so embarrassed, I couldn't watch it back. 350 videos, but I kept going. The problem is people are quitting on things too soon. You quit on something too soon because you're not getting immediate results. Expect to suck. It doesn't mean that you suck as a human. It just means you don't have the skills yet. And how do you get the skills? By practicing. And number three is ask yourself, what would the most bold version of you do? I got this question when I was talking to my video guy, Danny, who came to me with a really important personal problem in his life at the time. And I said, what would the most bold version of you do? It just came out. Man, I love that. And anytime he doesn't know what to do, he asks himself that question. What would the most bold version of me do? It's a great question because it allows you to push through a lot of your fears, a lot of your insecurities, to force yourself to be bold. And you want to be bold. You're meant to be bold. You're meant to create amazing, wonderful things. You want that big vision of yours to come true. You are bold. You are courageous. But we don't live in that land very often. And so if you ask that question, what would the most bold version of you do today? What it does is wash away a lot of those fears and insecurities and gives you the answer that you're actually looking for. Rule number two, be your biggest critic and fan. What do you say when you see yourself in the mirror? When it's just you, when you're all alone, it's just you, you see yourself in the mirror, what do you say? Do you say great things or do you beat yourself up? Most people, they might act confident and seem like they have it all put together, but secretly they're fighting their own battles and at home, in private, the comfort of their own home, they're their own worst enemies. The secret is to be your own biggest critic as well as your biggest fan. The push you give yourself has to be from a place of love and potential, not lack and despair. So I recently posted on Instagram a little cartoon of me passing by a mirror and you see my reflection in the mirror and the caption says, I love you. And then I challenge people to say, hey, what do you, what do you say to yourself when you look in the mirror? And giving them an 18 day challenge to say, every time you see a reflection of yourself, to say something positive, whether it's I love you or give yourself a compliment, something positive because I think most people live in the land of negativity. All we see is all the negative things that we're doing and all the things that didn't work out and things that could have been better. And that can actually be very healthy. I think you need to be your own biggest critic. I think you need to have higher standards for yourself than what you're currently doing. But it only works, being your own biggest critic only works when it's based off a foundation of love. When it's based off a foundation of I am an amazing human being and I love myself and I suck at all of these skills. The problem that most people have is you see that you suck at a skill that you didn't get the result, that you're not good on camera the first time you go out. You didn't get the result, you didn't land the sale, you didn't make the deal, you didn't get the date, you know, whatever it is, you didn't get the result, and then you think that you suck as a human because you don't have the skills. It's the opposite. You are, you're amazing as a human. It has to be from a foundation of love, that you love yourself, and that you suck at the skills. And then you can beat yourself up over how do I get better? How do I improve? How do I acquire the skills? How do I move forward towards my goals? Most people are their own biggest critic, but they're not their biggest fan. And I'm going to give you a three-step process on how to change it. Step number one is take the 18-day Flex the X challenge. So if you want to go to evancarmichael.com slash flex the X dot PDF, you can get the same calendar that I use. It's not here. It's somewhere. It's in my bedroom. It's where I usually keep it. And every day for the next 18 days, you challenge yourself that whenever I see myself, reflective surface, a mirror, the cell phone, whatever, I'm going to say something positive to myself. In fact, just make that your cell phone background. And that when you see your, your login screen or your home screen on your cell phone background, on your desktop, it says something positive about you. And it's a reminder, I have to say something positive about myself. Just for 18 days, try it. Flex the X challenge. Why 18 days? Because it takes at least 18 days to build a habit. Science says that it takes 18 to 254 days to build a habit. It's why I have my 254 series because I'm there with you every step of the way. And the average is actually 66 days of consecutive action. It means no time off, no days off to build the habit. But the minimum is 18 days. So just try it for 18 days. Just try it. What's going to happen in 18 days? 
The worst is you're saying something you don't believe about yourself for 18, you can handle it. You'll be okay. The best case scenario is you actually start to love yourself a little bit more. And the things that you can do when you believe in yourself and you love yourself are tremendous. So step number one is take the 18 day Flex DX I love you challenge. Step number two is being your own biggest critic as well as your biggest fan. You need to do both. And so ask yourself the criticism that I'm giving myself when I look at my videos, when I look at my content, when I look at how I'm handling my team, when, when you look at all the things that you're supposed to be doing, that you are doing on a daily basis and you beat yourself up, identify the parts that are just a skill set, that you rock, that you're amazing, that you're the best, but you just don't have the skill set yet. And how do you fix it? How do you acquire the skill set? Through more practice through more research, through modeling success, that you can get there. So split it up. Having that cognitive ability to say, I'm being hard on myself, but really it's just a skill set that I'm lacking and I'm awesome, makes a big difference. So start doing it today. And step number three is kick yourself forward, not down. This often comes when you're comparing yourself to others. You're comparing yourself to somebody else who's in your field, who's ahead of you, or somebody who you went to high school with or university with, and, and they have a bigger job than you, or making more money and have more kids, or whatever it is that you're jealous of. You kick yourself down. You say, I suck. Well, they, they're off doing this, and they acquired this by the time that they were your age, and, and you suck. You're not doing anything. You're nowhere close, right? That's kicking yourself down. That's not helpful. What you need to do is kick yourself forward. What you need to do is look at that and say, that's what's possible. That's the potential. That's what, that's what you can be capable of doing. But here's the thing. I think you actually need the kick. I think the comparison is good. I think it's healthy. I think the problem with the comparison is you're only looking at it from the negative because you actually don't love yourself yet. You have to build that up, right? Do the 18 day flex X challenge. It's based out of love to say that this is what's possible because without the kick, without the comparison, you stay where you are. The key though is you're kicking yourself forward to say that's what's possible. That's what I want to create. Somebody else has done it. I can do it too. I've got Michael Jordan level talent. I'm going to go off and crush it instead of kicking yourself down and saying that you suck and you're never going to get there. Also, if you want to have more self-confidence and self-belief, the science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action for you to shift that habit forward. So I've designed a special free program to help you get more self-belief for every day. For 254 days, I will send you an email to an unlisted video that if you watch it, will shift your confidence forward. The links to join for free are in the description below. You have to enjoy what you're doing. You have to wake up and look forward to the day that is ahead. Dramatically improve the chance of you getting your deal. They'll look over your proposal. They will give you feedback, suggestions, how to tweak your proposal. If you've never done it before, and I'm going through this process right now, we need to stop using weak language and pay attention to the words that you're speaking to others and to yourself. Rule number three, ask for help. Not asking for help is selfish. You might think that trying to do everything yourself is selfless, that it's wrong to ask for help and noble to do everything yourself. But you love helping people. You love helping others. Remember that joy you feel when you help somebody and brought a smile to their face knowing you made their week? By you not asking for help, you're cheating people of that opportunity to bring a smile to their face. Stop being selfish and start asking for help. I came up with this idea when I was at a video game cafe. So here's what happened. I was, I was on a call with one of my big customers at the time and I was in Los Angeles and we're doing a, a Google Live, streaming to my YouTube channel, lots of people watching, YouTube Live, I'm interviewing him and then the internet goes down. Like what happened? The power went out across all of Los Angeles. The power goes out and, it, and it's down. I got nothing. I, the stream is still live, but I'm not there anymore. I left my client live on the stream and he's, he's not sure what happens. He just sees my camera goes down and then he keeps going by himself for another 15, 20 minutes waiting for me to come back. And he's, he's embarrassed and it's awkward and he doesn't know what he's doing because the host <laughs> who has the audience there is now gone. And then eventually he just leaves because he said, well, I don't know where Evan is, but thank you guys for watching. And it put him in a really difficult situation. I felt terrible. I went back to watching you know, the live stream after like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Now it's out of my control. I, you know, the internet goes down in Los Angeles. What am, I, what am I supposed to do? There's no power anywhere. So as soon as the power gets back up, I messaged my, my client and say, hey man, I'm really sorry about that. Let's reschedule it. Let's do it again when I'm back home in Toronto where I know I have stable internet 
and, and I wanna do it again for free, no extra cost. Uh, even though we had almost finished the live stream together, we're gonna do a whole other one for free just because I want you to, I wanna make this right for you. Great, so we come back to Toronto. It's like the, a week or two later. And my internet is pretty rock solid in my home office. I've, I've never had an internet issue really happen while I was doing a live stream, but I wanted to make extra sure, extra sure that this time nothing happened because if something happened the second time, like just, it would not be a good thing. So I asked my friend J-Rise and I said, J-Rise, I need, I need a place that has rock solid internet that I'm gonna do this live stream and nothing can go wrong. And he said, I got a place, there's an internet cafe that, got, that I go to I'll introduce you to the owner, I know him, and, and you can do it there. Like, thank you so much. So we go there, I'm there an hour early, I'm setting up, I'm talking to the owner, I'm testing the gear, my microphone, the headset, all of it, the camera, testing all of it, just to make sure that everything is working smoothly. I'm nervous because the last time it, it failed on us. My client comes on, we go live for half an hour, an hour, I don't remember, and, and it was smooth, perfect, no issues, crisp, amazing internet, blazing fast speeds, Great time with the audience, and we delivered an awesome product. <sighs> Sigh of relief, right? I'm so pumped. I go talk to the owner and say, dude, thank you, man. It was perfect. No complaints, no problems. Thank you so much. How much do I owe you? And he said, well, you were on the computer for about an hour and a half, and j Raj was on the computer for about an hour and a half, but I'll just bundle it together. So. I forget what he told me, it was like five bucks, or seven bucks, or 10 bucks, or something. Like, are you kidding me? I would have paid a thousand dollars. I would have paid a lot of money just to make sure that this went smoothly because it's the it's the relationship with my client at the time, right? I said, okay, well, let me, great. Here's here's the seven dollars that you wanted, awesome. Let me buy let me buy some some stuff from behind the counter. Let me buy some snacks from my friend j Raz. j Raz was hungry, he needed to eat, so like here, here's 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Let me just buy out a whole bunch of your snacks and give it to him. He's like, no, 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 you don't have to do that, man. Don't worry about it. Like, no, I, I wanna do it. Let me buy the snack. No, 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 don't worry about it. The owner thought that he was doing a good thing. The owner thought that he was being selfless, that hey, don't worry, but you don't have to do it. That just, just paying for the internet was enough for him. But he was actually being selfish. In that moment, he was being selfish because he cheated me of the opportunity of one saying, thank you, I wanted to pay more. I want to pay more. You're cheating me of the opportunity to do it and you're cheating me of the opportunity to help my friend j Rise and give him some food because he was hungry so we had to go somewhere else. You need to be willing to bring other people in. You need to be willing to ask for help. Yes, you don't want to waste your time. Yes, you want to be respectful. Yes, but people love helping others. We are built to serve. You want to help other people. That joy that you feel when you help somebody out, allow it to come into other people's hearts too. And it only comes when you open up and you ask for help and you say, hey, I would, I'm really struggling with this thing right now. And, and I, would, I could really use some help. And people may not be willing to do it. They may not have the time to do it. Don't be too pushy and don't be too overwhelming, but don't be selfish at the same time too. So now how do you do it? I'm gonna give you a three-step process on how to ask for help and stop being selfish. Step number one is what are you struggling with right now? What are you struggling with right now? Well, where do you need help in your business? Listen, entrepreneurship is rough, right? You're wearing all the hats. What do you need the most help with now? Whether it's strategy, whether it's a new skill set you need to learn, whether it's just basic, whether it's just taking off some of the, the operational stuff that you have to do in your business, right? The day-to-day, -day, the, the grind is just overwhelmed with project work. What do you need help with? Number two, who is an expert at that thing? Who do you know? Who have you helped before? Who's in your circle? Who is an expert at that thing? Who by them spending a little bit of time with you could make a really big impact on your business. Make that list. And step number three is reach out to them with love, appreciation, and zero expectations. Explain the story, explain how much this would mean to you, explain why you're struggling and how you wanna use this thing to get to the next level in your business, in your career, in your mission, in your vision, and then how they could be an important part of it. With love, but zero expectations. If they say they're busy, don't be hurt by it. If they say, sorry, I can't help, that's okay. But reach out, don't take the yes away from them. The problem when you don't reach out is you're saying no for them. When you don't reach out, 
You're saying no for them. And a lot of people would want to say yes to you. Rule number four, become a shark. You haven't become a shark yet because you haven't decided that your mission is important enough. Now, being a shark doesn't mean that you have to become aggressive, violent, and angry. It means that you're pushing to be the best in your industry, a true leader, someone who makes a difference. And it starts with your mission. Raise the level of how important your mission feels to you and your entire life changes. So I look at my mission as an example. I want to solve the world's biggest problem. It's never going to happen. I'm trying to solve the biggest problem I think in the world, which is that lack of belief in yourself. The untapped potential is what I wake up every day trying to do. And the more that I put myself in a position of this thing matters, like what I do really, really, really matters. The more I can put myself in that mind frame, the bigger my thinking becomes, the bolder I get as a human and as an entrepreneur. And I look at the path that I've taken over the past X number of years. I look at being able to collaborate with someone like Eric Thomas when he gave a shout out in his video. That would have been something I wouldn't have thought of when I first started on YouTube. I look at the relationships I've built with people like Tony Robbins and Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone and the people that we profile. Tony Robbins, I took the people on my team to go see him at Unleash the Power Within. I brought five, I think, of my people down and we're sitting up in the cheap seats. And then a year later, a year later, he invited me as his personal guest to sit right down in the front row. Chairman invited seating and I'm going back. I leave tomorrow. I don't know when this video goes up, but I leave tomorrow for Dallas to do it again. It's wild. Right? Like it doesn't feel like that stuff is possible. It comes from shifting the value of your, your mission. I deserve it because what I'm doing is solving a real problem. And we often feel like we're not capable of doing these great things. And we downplay our role and we downplay how important our mission is. And we downplay what we think we can do. That's what needs to shift. That's what needs to change. You need to feel like the work you do matters. You need to feel like the mission you're on means something can have a big impact. And if you're approaching life in that way, everything in your business changes. I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I use to help, and I think it'll help you too. Step number one is have a big why and a little why. So the big why is your mission, is your vision, is what you're trying to accomplish, right? It's this big thing that you're trying to go off and do. And it should be inspiring, it should be bold, and it should be something that you can't just do tomorrow, right? It's gotta be this big thing that's all-encompassing that maybe will never happen in your lifetime. Sometimes with the big why, it feels a little too big. Sometimes that big why feels like it's never gonna happen. You can't do it. You don't have the skills, the resources, the capabilities. And so when that seed of doubt creeps in is when I use the little why. The little why are the day to day. So if my goal, if, if I wanna solve human potential, right? I want everybody in the world to believe in themselves. I wanna help a billion entrepreneurs, whatever I'm, I'm pulling from. If that ever feels too big, what I'll do is look at the little why of, well, I help somebody today. I helped somebody yesterday. I'll look at my YouTube comments. I'll look at my Instagram comments. I'll, I'll see the stories that come in from the emails and say, Evan, thank you so much for X, Y, Z. Every day I get lots of them and that fuels me. Those are the little whys. So I may not be hitting my big why, but I, I know that the work I do matters. That's at the core of what you need to feel, that the work that you do matters. It's having an impact, it means something to people. Now you might say, well, Evan, you're fortunate. Now you've got all these followers and subscribers and it's easy to get and love and accolades, and it is, it's true, I'm, I'm spoiled. Every day I get tons of comments and it's almost all positive. But I did this when I was just getting started. I did this before I even had a YouTube channel. I used to have these moments when I was speaking. I did these events in Toronto, helping local entrepreneurs, and, and I would go up and do my speech and, and do a workshop and help people, and I felt so amazing after, amazing. Like, man, yes, this is so great, what I'm doing. And then I would wake up the next day and feel like, well, I, I don't know, what I do isn't important. <laughs> wake up the next day and feel like, I don't know, there's, there's no meaning in what I'm doing. I got nothing on my plate today. And so it had these spikes of purpose and spikes of, of momentum and spikes of belief, and then fall back down to feeling like it doesn't mean anything. I think we have a daily reset. And so I think you need to remind yourself daily that what you do is important. So what I did when I didn't have a big following was I put together a PowerPoint file of some of the comments that came out of my workshop. So when I did a workshop, people would sometimes email me in or we had these feedback forms and they'd write something down about what they liked or didn't like. And the positive ones about how I've, I've impacted their life, I would put on this PowerPoint file that I would look at every morning. So I put it to music that I liked and then have these words pop up. It's like, yeah, it's just a reminder. That, that what I do matters, it means something. And I think you need it on a daily basis because no matter how great you may feel today, tomorrow you're starting up from almost ground zero again. 
and you can slowly shift ground zero over time, what your baseline becomes from, from one year to the next might be different, but on a day to day, you don't see it that much. And so you need to inject that into your day every day. And so sometimes the big why is enough. Sometimes the big why is like, yeah, of course they're gonna go off and crush and go do these amazing things. Sometimes it's not enough and you gotta remind yourself of the little whys that, hey, I impacted somebody yesterday. I impacted somebody today. So you feel like the work you do matters. It makes a huge difference. Set number two is chart your start. So along the lines of big why, little why, what your morning routine looks like matters. It makes a difference. Most people wake up like an accident. Most people wake up and fall into somebody else's version of what their life should be. You pick up your phone and you start dealing with emergencies and emails and crisis and DMs and you don't control your day. Successful people don't do that. Successful people have a routine that sets them up for success, that demands excellence. Everybody wakes up and, and, and you're tired and you're just getting started and you don't have full energy. Nobody wakes up and like, yeah, oh my gosh, it's Wednesday, I'm so excited. Like that's not how it happens. But, but they demand that of themselves, right? And so the morning routine that you create for yourself has to lead to you feeling that way, feeling bold, feeling confident, feeling unstoppable. And so much more important than what I do or what Eric does as a morning routine is thinking, what do you do? What do you need to do? What makes you feel bold? What makes you feel confident? What makes you feel alive? And then doing that every morning, demanding boldness from yourself every morning, charting your start so that every morning you wake up and you do the thing that helps you believe more in yourself. Most people, if they have a morning routine, you're just checking the boxes. Like I watch a video, check, write in my journal, check, you know, eat a healthy breakfast, check, 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 check. You're checking it off, but if you don't have the feeling behind it, it doesn't count. You might have spent two hours going through your ideal morning routine and checked everything off, but you don't feel bold and unstoppable. Fail, it didn't work. Sometimes it's just a little bit more intention. Maybe watching videos help you, but if you're doing it while you're checking your phone and while you're eating breakfast and while you're doing three other things, you don't get the feeling of the video, right? Or reading the book or anything else. You're distracted, you're not focused. You don't have the intention of this has to make me feel bold. This has to be an amazing day for myself, right? Demanding excellence. So chart your start. Whatever the thing is that makes you feel bold, unstoppable, powerful, has to be into your daily routine every single day. And number three is have an environment of excellence. The environment you're in makes such a big difference. You are a product of your environment. Your environment has been perfectly designed to keep you exactly where you are. So you wanna change it, change your environment. You wanna change your situation in life, change your environment. Now, that doesn't mean move to Canada or move to the beaches or move to some other country. You may not be able to afford that, awesome. Figure it out right now. I can't meet Steve Jobs, but I can have him up on my wall. Start with your office environment, wherever office is. If, if it's a home office, an actual office, a basement, you know, your mom's couch, whatever it is, wherever your office is, design it. The beauty of this, th these may not mean much to you, but it means something to me. And I walk in every day and all these pictures have a, a reason and a story for it. And so I put them up once. I had to decide once, what do I wanna have on here that's gonna make me feel bold? And then every day I walk in and it just takes care of itself. I call them play bigger triggers. These are my play bigger triggers. I'm standing here working, usually my monitors are here, so I'm looking at this, and then I got Steve Jobs kind of staring me down right here. Right? Say, so, let's go, Evan, come on, let's go, let's go, right? I'll do it once, and then every day he's staring me down. And, and then AP Janini and my parents and Howard Schultz and Kanye West, and this is my environment. These are my play bigger triggers. You set it up once, and it inspires you daily. Right? Next, look at what's on your computer background. Look at your screens. What's on your computer background? What's on your cell phone background? Should be something that inspires you. Inspires you to play bigger. Your play bigger triggers. So anywhere that you're hanging out often, your office, your car if you drive a lot, your bedroom, your screens, all of it. Make sure there's a play bigger trigger to infuse boldness in you on a consistent basis every single day. Rule number five, the last one before our very special bonus clip, Believe. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Right? Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. One of the biggest reasons why entrepreneurs don't win, because you don't believe in yourself enough. It's why, why do I have this channel? Why is my one word believe? Look, look at the back of Nina's sweater. There it is, right? Believe, believe, that's it. 
It's so important. There's so many, you guys are geniuses. There's so many geniuses, massively talented people out there with amazing ideas that can change the world, but you don't go off and crush it because you don't believe in yourself enough. I think the two biggest problems in the world are one, recognizing that you have Michael Jordan level talent at something, believing that you have something in you that you're not meant to just wake up and photocopy your life every day working for somebody else, just believing that. And two, then believing in that ability. Believing that you have Michael Jordan level talent is something, and then when you found it, believing in it enough to chase it down every day to get better, because you need to beat on your craft, because it may be something that's totally outside what is normal in your family, because it may be something way outside what is normal for your culture, or your society, or your community, but you have to go off and do that crazy thing. And it's really hard to believe in yourself enough to chase it down, especially when it's against what everybody around you is saying and what they believe. And so great, yes, I need to believe in myself, amazing. How do you do it? What's the process? How do you gain self-belief? I'm gonna give you two strategies that will work extremely well, can work for anybody, can work for you, because it's time that you step into your greatness. Number one, you need to eliminate the negativity in your life and replace it with belief. So think about what are the thoughts, who are the people, what are the things around you that keep you where you are, that keep these negative patterns in your head? Is it your parents? Is it your friends? Is it the TV shows you're watching? The media you're consuming? Like, what is it that is toxic that makes you feel small? And as much as possible, you either cut it out of your life or reduce the exposure. If it's your mom who's always on you and says you can't go be an entrepreneur, maybe you just don't talk about your career with your mom. You put boundaries up. I don't want to talk about this. There's other things that we have in common. You focus on that stuff. You lay out the ground rules. You make them respect you. And you don't talk about the things that you know is going to lead to conflict. And for other people, you may need to just completely cut them out of your life. If it's your best friend from growing up, just because you were friends in grade four doesn't mean you should still be friends with adults. A lot of our friendships are out of convenience. You're with people just because it's convenient to be with people. But you've grown apart and you have to recognize that. If somebody is toxic around you, you shouldn't be with them. And if you are, it's micro doses. And so you need to cut out a lot of the crap in your life. Anything that's causing negativity or self-doubt needs to be eliminated from your life as much as possible. Great, now you have a vacuum. Now you've got this hole, not as, not as this void inside you. Great, what do you do? You fill it up with positivity. You fill it up with belief. My channel's a pretty good resource. <laughs> I got this channel, I got the other channels, we got three videos plus a day coming out across my channels that if you want more belief in your life, here's a great resource for you. But forget about me, it's not about me, it's about you. What makes you feel belief? If it's watching videos, great. If it's listening to a podcast, reading a book, doing an act of service, meditating, prayer, whatever the thing is that helps you feel belief, do that every single day. Fill yourself up with it. I inject myself with so much vitamin C belief I see belief as this injection that I put into myself every day. I have so much of it in me that if somebody sneezes their toxicity on me, I'm not gonna get sick because I've done the work, because I'm surrounded with so much belief. That's what you need for your life as well. So you're cutting out the negative people, you're cutting out the negative resources, and you're replacing it with positivity so that when somebody does sneeze, they're toxic on you, you're not gonna get sick because you've taken so much belief vitamin C. So that's the first step. Eliminate those people, replace it with positivity and belief, whatever that thing is for you. Step number two is you gotta start acting. You gotta start doing things that make you believe in yourself. You gotta take a challenge that you didn't think you could do and start doing it. For some people, it's as simple as not hitting the snooze button in the morning. For some of you, hitting the snooze button is the hardest thing in the world. Great, make that your goal. For the next month, you're gonna wake up every day when you say you're gonna wake up. You're gonna set your alarm and you're just gonna get up when it goes off and you're gonna celebrate and you're gonna start building self-belief that you're the kind of person, this is what you need to set. You're the kind of person who follows through. You set goals and you follow through. You set goals and you follow through. You set goals and you follow through. The problem is you have an identity where you don't follow through. You don't believe yourself. You say you're gonna do something, but then you, you know you're not gonna do it. You say you're gonna go off and do this big thing, but you know you're not gonna do it because you don't do the little things, because you can't even wake up on time, because you let yourself down on your goals. And so you need to make sure that every time you set a goal, you follow through, you do it. You start training yourself. I'm the kind of person who sets goals and who follows through. And so it starts with what happens in the morning, right? You wake up when you say you're gonna get up. What happens next? What's the next piece of your morning routine, right? And then you do that every single day you follow through. And so you have to be very, 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 very careful about the goals that you say you're gonna do. Because when you say you're gonna do something, you have to follow through. When I started this whole 90 day tour, our first stop was Boston. I got in at two in the morning. At the time I had a goal of doing 30 minutes of cardio every day. While Nina, Danny, everybody else slept, I did my 30 minutes of cardio. It was the worst cardio of all time. 
I burn zero calories on it. I should have been sleeping, but I pat myself on the back because when it's hard and you do it, that's when you build the belief. When it's easy and you do it, nobody cares. You don't care about it because it was easy. But when it's hard and you do it, when it's hard to wake up at five in the morning when you say you're going to because you had a rough night and you do it, that's when you build self-belief. Now, if you're doing that every day, you're only sleeping four hours on every day, your life is broken, you gotta fix it. But on a one-off, you have to get up. You have to do it. You have to set goals and you have to follow through. That's this two-step process. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. How do you build belief? One, eliminate the negativity, replace it with positivity. Two, take on challenges, set goals for yourself and then actually follow through on them. If you don't believe in yourself, you're never gonna do great things. You're always gonna have one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake at the same time. You know you're capable of more. You know you're capable of great things. You know you have Michael Jordan level talent at something, but because you don't believe in yourself, you don't chase it down. And so you live in this cycle of negativity, of knowing that you're capable of more and frustration. And I wanna unlock that. I mean, that's the whole point of all of my content and my channels. I wanna unlock that. And those two steps, if that's you right now, will dramatically change your life. You will be, if you just did those two things every day for the next year, you will be a dramatically different person. Holy cow, one year from today looking back, you will be a dramatically different person. The things you will have accomplished will surprise you. And I'm so pumped to cheer you on. Entrepreneurs generally don't have a lot of patience and that's actually a good thing. We want things now, we want to hustle hard, we want to see the results of our labor paying off, we want to see you know, change happening, we have a big vision, we know it can work and we want it to happen right now and that's, that's, that's amazing I want you to hold on to it and at the same time I want you to have incredible patience because what ends up happening is entrepreneurs often quit too soon. You had the right idea, you had the right vision, you even had the right execution in starting it up, but you just quit. You thought it was gonna happen in three months where it's actually gonna happen in three years. For what you're doing every single day, you need to be applying yourself and close off every other opportunity for four years and then you'll be successful. Four years ago on my YouTube channel, I had 7,000-ish subscribers. Four years ago. How did I get here with 1.2 million? By making videos every single day. Every single day. I, we haven't missed a day in four years. And in the past two or three years, it's been three times a day. Or at least two times a day. Just grinding it out. And in those little micro moments, in those micro videos, it's super impatience, right? It's like this video has to deliver. This video now has to deliver. This next one, this one right here has to deliver. There's a lot of impatience to make things happen and it's knowing that this is gonna take me years to get to where I wanna go. And so many of you watching could have had more talent than I did. My first videos were not very good. I was not natural, natural in front of the camera. It took a lot of effort, a lot of patience, a lot of doing a video over and over and over and over and over and over again. Entire day making one video, just being in front of the camera and it still sucked. A lot of you are starting from a place that's way better than me. I had zero editing skills, zero knowledge about lighting and technique and all of that stuff. I sucked. I had nothing. But I did it for four years and here we are. And I'm going to do it again. For those of you who are following my journey who say, well now I'm already big, I have 1.2 million subscribers, you know, you're not a small YouTuber anymore, come follow me on Instagram. I've got 8,000 followers now, 8,000 something. I started taking it seriously about a month ago, had 6,000 followers. We've grown. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put in work on Instagram, do three posts every single day for four years. And I'm gonna learn the algorithm and learn the ins and outs and fix my design. And every day there's new changes that are coming out that I wasn't doing the day before because I've learned, because I sucked and I still suck and I'm, and I'm learning to get better. And for those of you who are already way ahead of me, for those of you who have way more talent and design and just natural skill at this stuff, who may already have 50,000 followers or 100,000 followers on Instagram, I'm coming. And it's not a race that, like, that I'm better than you and that I'm gonna, I'm gonna get there and you won't. It's just the work. Like I will have the patience to do three posts a day for four years because I know it's gonna pay off. My horizon is today, like the post that I make today has to rock. I have to be proud of it. I want to show Hayden, I want to show my grandkids about the post that I'm making right now today. I want my grandkids to see this single individual video right now that I am posting. 
That's the energy and passion and fire and fuel that I try to bring to every single piece of content that I make. I want it to matter. I want it to mean something to myself and to future generations. That's that's my intention. I can't always bring that out. I don't always execute, but that's the intention every single time in creating anything that I do. It has to mean something. It has to matter. And then I'm going to do that for four years, three times a day. And that's how I'll win. And that's how you can win. I'm trying to show this to you not to impress you, but to impress upon you that you probably already have more skills than I do and that you can do this too. You're just giving up too soon. I want to tell you that your mission is important. I want to tell you that your idea is brilliant, that you are a genius, that you can make this happen, that you don't need to sit on your couch and watch somebody else make millions of dollars off of your idea. You're just not putting in enough consistent work. You start and you stop and you start and you stop and you start and you stop and it's not consistent where if you just did the thing every day for four years, you will win. And so that's why it's so, it's so important that you love the process and not just the result, that you are doing this because you love the actual work, not just hitting the million subscribers or the million revenue or whatever the thing is that you're chasing, whatever the goal. The goals are great to give some extra motivation, but the drive comes from the work, the meaning, the actual process. I like making videos. I like now making Instagram posts, right? You have to find a thing that you love to do and then shut off the part of you that is so impatient that you need immediate results. Shut off the judgments from your friends and your family who say, what are you doing? You've been doing this for six months and it hasn't worked out yet. Yeah, I know, because I'm on a four or five year plan. I'm going to keep doing the same thing. I'm going to keep getting better. I'm going to keep improving. I'm going to keep posting. I'm going to keep creating. I'm going to keep pushing for four or five years and then I will win. And all of the, the success comes at the last part. All of the learning and the momentum and the traction starts now, but it feels so small. It feels so intangible. It feels so little. But if you keep doing it, you will see massive growth in year three in year four, in year five, and it'll be so unstoppable because it'll be like this huge avalanche that just keeps building and building and building upon all the work that you put in. And so it's great to have the impatience. Your impatience should be on a daily basis. The impatience should be driving you consistently forward to make whatever you do today, make it awesome. And you need to have insane patience to know that this is not gonna happen in three months or six months or in a year, to have a longer horizon to think, I will do this for four or five years and then I will win. If you take that approach, I guarantee you that you will win and I'm so fighting for you to win. I so badly want to see you win. I so know that you can win and I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped for four years from now to see a handful of you say, I listened to that message, I applied it and I won. So pumped for four years from now. Please, please, you, please, you be that person. Be consistent. Be patient. Your mission is important. You are a genius. Your ideas will work out. Be consistent. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want to learn how to achieve success by solving one problem, check out the video next to me. I think you're going to enjoy. Continue to believe. I will see you there. You are what you consistently think about. Whether you think you'll win or lose, you're right. That's a challenge I think a lot of us face. We are stuck in our head, in our mind, 